What's up, folks? Uh, this is part four of my review on my custom Kabatacons. Here is Blast Off. And I was actually looking forward to doing this review. It'll probably be the longer of the six so far. Uh, mainly because there's a lot to Blast Off. And uh, he's on Onslaught's trailer. And I figured since Onslaught is going to be last, at least have him in each video so you can at least uh, get an idea of how big he is. Also, as well as, uh, out of all the figures, Blastoff is the largest so far, uh, besides Onslaught. And I'm a scale nut. I've gotten to that point to where, uh, if you watch the cartoons, you know, the robots were huge, but like Soundwave, for instance, is he was a... 20 foot tall robot but he could transform and size himself down to be picked up by a uh, human to carry on their shoulder uh, but if you look at it that way you know what the hell you know and as far as scale goes as you can see he is a, a very big orbital space shuttle slash fighter slash battleship slash whatever He's pretty badass, and uh, one of the main reasons why I decided to go with this mold is I saw a gentleman who did a Classics Bruticus also, and um, he used the same mold uh, for uh, his Bruticus, and I got such a kick out of it, and I wanted to use it for my own uh, Bruticus. Um, it just is a kick-ass mold, and uh, he's probably one of the coolest of the Combaticons that I made so far. And I really wanted to push the weathering on this one, too, like I did with the others. Uh, like, uh, because he's an orbital shuttle and he flies in and out of the atmosphere, of course you're going to have damage from space debris and um, the heat from re-entry of the atmosphere and stuff like that. So I thought that was a pretty cool touch. And, of course, I added, you know, there's black, you know, the purple, little bits of uh, metalware and silver detailing in the vents and stuff like that. And, it just, it's an all around awesome looking figure. I'm trying to show you some of the detail there. Uh, you can see he's well armed with blasters on his wings. Of course, kick ass thrusters in the back here. Uh, the uh, blasters on his wings were uh, donated by uh, a friend of mine named Storm Vapor. He's from TFW 2005 Forums. Uh, thank you, Storm Vapor, for donating these. And uh, it's just all around made this figure badass. Okay. Um, Blast Off, basically, even out of the box, he's somewhat of a parts former. He's made from the uh, Energon Jetfire mold. It's pretty cool. So let's get on to the transformation. First, I'll take off blasters. Okay, let's move that. And then uh, the same on the other side. Uh, these will come in to play later on. So let's take these out. Now, I said before that he is a parts former, so to speak. So we'll start with the bottom half of this piece. So this pops off because it has a peg on it. Okay. Put that back there for the time being. Okay, here we are. Um, let's start uh, with the legs. Let's see. They unpeg like this, and they are tight, and they are on uh, very tight ratcheting joints. And peg it, and then what you do is you flip it around, you take the thrusters, and you fold them down, and they are opposable, which I get a kick out of. So you fold them down like this into the grooves right there. So damn stiff. Same thing on the other side. Like so. Okay. And then you take the landing gear right here, which is also pegged in. A lot of peg pegs on this figure. Landing gear, like so. Same thing on the other side. Um, let's see. Uh, here are the feet. And we'll do those. Straighten up the legs a little bit. Here, um, turn them around to face them like this. Same thing on the other side. Okay, fold up 
the wings right there, and then the feet. They're kind of quirky, but they work. Fold it down like this, and you fold it up and accordions like that. And I kind of leave these out, basically, because he is heavy, but you can fold them in. Fold them in for the time being. But I'll put them out when I allow them to stand, because he is a little bit back heavy. Same thing on the other side. You fold down the foot, and then you accordion it up inside the leg, like so, just like this. And same thing right there for now. There you go, there you have his legs. Okay, um, the thing of it is with these figures, he's pretty badass in a lot of ways. Um, he's got a lot of uh, articulation for a big guy. Now we'll move this off to the side and I'll finish doing his uh, upper body. This is kind of quirky, I find that odd. Here are the thrusters, they also become the arms. And what I do is pull them out like that. Nice tight ratcheting joints here, and then you just open these hatches up like so. Sometimes it's hard to get your finger in there to open them up like that, and then you just fold them thrusters in like this. Close it. Exposes the fist. Same thing on the other side like this. Close the hatch, and there you go. There you go, you got the fists there. And then you open these up like this. Um, let's see. Fold the canopy. Uh, leave the canopy alone for the moment. And then uh, what you do is you turn these. They're on a, I forgot what it is, a swivel joint that's like spring loaded. Same thing on the other side, just like this, and then you turn them like so, so they face just like this, okay? Same thing on the other side, just like this, okay? Then you take the canopy, back like this, and then fold it down, like so, and there is the head, of course, and then all you do it back to the back on the pin, like you saw before, and then you basically wrap these around, pretty, pretty much wrap around, and you just peg them in like so. There's a couple pins right there inside, kind of hard to see. It's one, same thing on the other side, peg it in like that, so it's on the stiff side there. Okay. And then, um, what you do is you just fold it down, and there you go, you got the head. Let me, uh, move this in just a little bit, as he is a little bit big. Um, here you go. Here is Blastoff. Now, originally in the, the Jetfire mold has a head that doesn't move. I wanted uh, the head to have some articulation uh, to be able to turn left and right. So I took the head and I made a put it on a ball joint so the head actually moves. It looks a little small compared to the body, but it is the factory head. I didn't do anything except uh, add a little styrene to it to square off his head just a touch and just gave it a, a paint job as you can see there. That's it. I left the head original because I like it, even though the body is a little bit big for him, uh, for the head and everything. It looks really badass and I really like the way it, it came out. So I just decided to leave it well enough alone. And then, um, also, he has a rifle, which is just, you know, it's one of Roadbuster's guns that I had tweaked to make it blast off, more or less, so to speak. So, pretty much goes in the, the right hand, or the left, one of the two. Ah, the hell would it put in this left hand, huh? Whoops. Just like this. There you go. And here is Blastoff. Now, out of all of them, he is the largest, uh, or the bulkiest of the group, but I think he came out really nice. I did a lot of weathering to him, 
and but I still wanted to hold true to the uh, cartoon as much as possible, but still give it a new flair. Um, I like taking the wings and folding them down underneath so that, you know, they don't stick out. But you don't have to. I've seen it where he can, they can be posed either way. So that's cool by me. But, uh, there he is. Pretty sweet. Um, he's bulky, and I like that. I get a kick out of that. Now, like I said, I usually keep these down for him to stand on, but since he's standing so well, I'll just leave them up. He is badass. Um, now, I'm going to put him aside and show you uh, the rifles. Um, and that's something... Ah, that would have it. See these? These are his um, rifles. I'll put him back a little bit, just in case he does decide to fall over. Here are the rifles. Uh, these I decided to use as mortar cannons for his back. Not like Bruticus, but similar. And uh, this one has particular use because of the scope on it, of course. But I'll show you that later on. Uh, these pretty much uh, just uh, peg into his back, similar to this. And they just peg on here. And they're just made for just for fun, added fun, uh, for detail. Let me get them on the way. They should be. Sorry about that. Um, this one can go over here. I usually put them where they're closer to his back, right there. And sit there like that, and the same thing with the other side. Um, yeah, pretty much like this. Peg in the same way. And they sit on his back like a set of uh, work cannons, just to fill out his back a little bit and add that little extra something that, you know, he might not have had, which I think is pretty badass. Um, he looks pretty cool. Um, the head, like I said, turns, you know, like this, and you can go, it doesn't go up or down, but he has the articulation in his head, which all the other figures have, which he was missing, and that's pretty cool. The head looks a little small, but I'm cool with that, so let's leave it at that, huh? Anyway, um, finally, uh, before, uh, we finish, I might as well show you, uh, Bruticus's weapon, because this is what this one is for. So let's move him to the back for now. And uh, it has the scope on it. And that's. I left the scope on it because it's easier, it's less likely to get lost. So I uh, epoxied it in place. But this is the start for uh, Bruticus' main weapon. But instead of just being this, because Bruticus, Bruticus is going to be quite large, so I wanted to give him something better. And that's where this comes into play. Okay, uh, this I cobbled together from multiple parts, Lego parts and whatever and what have you, as well as adding wiring details for the extra cool effect, as well as a sick and scary ass bayonet. And this inspired me, I got inspired to put the bayonet on it from uh, Fans Project Bruticus's uh, survival knife look. But instead of giving him a survival knife, I wanted to do something even sicker and a scary ass bayonet's the way to go, and this is pretty cool. Okay, and this combines with this to make the rifle, Bruticus' main rifle. And what you do is it's got grooves here, here, and there's pegs here, and they basically slide like a track, similar to like this. And it just slides in, similar, and you push it all the way in as far as it'll go. That's pretty much about it. And then you just fold the stock of the rifle down. And there you go. There is the rifle for Bruticus. Pretty mean ass rifle, huh? And it's actually quite big. It's it's uh, pretty tall. Uh, kind of dwarfs blast off a bit. But anyway, uh, thought you all would like to get a kick out of that and like to see what it looks like and stuff. That's pretty cool. Anyway. This is the end of this review, as I've taken too much time up. Uh, stay tuned for more to come. Take care, everybody. Peace.